Yeah, we have reached the uh, pre-landing uh, phase orbit actually, and that is around uh, 110 by 25 kilometer. And from this orbit, uh, uh, at about a 30 kilometer point, uh, we will be starting our uh, descent phase, uh, which will be lasting around uh, 15 to 16 minutes. Okay, so that will start on Wednesday around 5:47 minutes or so, as per our plan. And uh, the lander will be traversing through this uh, trajectory, descent trajectory. And it will be reaching the landing point uh, about uh, 15 minutes later. So this entire plan is worked out. And uh, it is very crucial to follow the exact trajectory for this uh, descent. Because the, the margins of the arrays are quite low on this kind of descents. That's why this uh, soft landing is considered to be a, a very difficult uh, job to achieve. And from my unit, ISRO Initial Systems Unit, uh, we have given uh, two crucial packages which is uh, directly responsible for the accuracy of this uh, descent trajectory. Uh, the first one was uh, IRAP. Uh, that had actually been during the uh, useful during the propulsion module phase, which actually took the lander module to the lunar trajectory. And the accuracy of those all those orbits, earthbound orbits and the lunar injection as well as the initial lunar orbits were done with the accuracy provided by the gyros and accelerometers of IRAP package which was included in the propulsion module. Lunar module contains a package called LIRAP, that is a laser gyro based initial referencing and accelerometer package. This package includes uh, four gyros, which are uh, extremely accurate in determining the attitude of the system. It also contains four accelerometers, which are of, uh, which can sense uh, something like uh, two micro g kind of thing. Two uh, g means uh, that's the uh, acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Uh, so that kind of accuracy we have achieved with, the, with these accelerometers. And there are four accelerometers and four gyros. In fact, we need only three gyros and three accelerometers to do this job. One is actually provided as a redundant sensor. So uh, in the entire Chandrayaan design, we have gone ahead with the redundancy policy. Wherever the crucial systems are there, those systems always have a redundant uh, uh, system, which will be available in case of a deviation or a failure of the first uh, system. So in our uh, package, as I told, there are four gyros and four accelerometers, and all four will be active at that time, and uh, they can tolerate one failure or one deviation, one system deviation. And the accuracy with which these packages works, uh, as I told earlier, uh, crucial to uh, the landing. And near to landing, we always have other sensors coming in, like a radio altimeter, which gives you the altimeter, uh, altitude of the uh, spacecraft with respect to the uh, surface of the uh, moon because it, uh, it actually it is based on the reflection of a laser beam uh, or, I mean a RF beam from the and there is another package which uses a laser beam also uh, to measure the altitude so we have two packages and those altitude information also will be used in determining the exact trajectory that we need to follow and the, all this uh, and there is a Doppler velocity uh, meter also, which uh, which gives you the information about the velocity of the package in all three directions, vertical and two horizontal directions, and that information also will be used uh, in the uh, added to the uh, information that what our package LIRAP is giving. All these things will be combined to get the best F, uh, uh, accuracy. So uh, we are all so proud uh, that my team is uh, so proud that. Uh, and we are uh, looking at its performance of that package uh, very closely in order to uh, make sure that uh, its health is exactly good and its performance is as expected. How the experience of Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 2 helped by this Yes, hugely, because Chandrayaan 1 was our first uh, attempt. At that time, a lot of things were not known to us, and we depended uh, on 
information available uh, elsewhere to decide on the that uh, uh, mission in fact it was an orbital lunar orbital mission primarily with a, a moon uh, moon impact probe also included okay uh, and chandrayaan 2 when it came we attempted the next big step that is soft landing okay uh, generally people take a few orbiter mission to reach the soft landing stage but we straight away went from an orbiter mission to a landing mission in chandrayaan 2 and at that time also we didn't have much information about uh, many of the things uh, especially the lunar gravity model the lunar map all those things were uh, not fully known to us but the chandrayaan 2 orbiter was more than 100% uh, successful it is actually the, we have an ohr a very high resolution camera there which allowed us to totally uh, map the lunar surface and uh, we have our own maps of uh, lunar surface the india has the entire uh, lunar surface mapped on our own and we have very good uh, resolution better than 50 cm kind of resolution we have for these maps and uh, so that information actually helps us to decide upon our landing area and the and even uh, the the craters and the unevenness of those area and to choose the right area to land and we have more information about the gravity of the uh, 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 the moon because the gravity of moon is very complex compared to the earth gravity um, gravity of the moon is uh, very complex because it doesn't have a molten core in fact so it's more like a solid uh, 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 i mean planet actually so its gravity model is actually fairly complex so we have a very good uh, idea about those models now so chandrayaan 1 and chandrayaan 2 experiences have actually really helped us uh, in order to understand uh, how the mission has to be designed in such a way that even devi deviations in the systems should not affect the uh, outcome of the mission so in chandrayaan 3 we have taken lot of design uh, uh, steps to make sure that uh, deviations in the systems uh, minor deviations in the systems will not affect the outcome of the mission still we will achieve the soft landing if the propulsion modules varies slightly uh, differently or uh, some sensors move behave slightly differently or um, one or one or two systems fully doesn't achieve its uh, uh, intended purpose uh, in all those thing uh, contingencies also we have designed the mission for the it will take a slightly different trajectory and it will do the job similarly if the intended uh, position uh, we don't reach the intended position exactly we have a strategy to move aside and look for a better position and land so that also is included all this uh, all this uh, uh, wisdom about uh, doing this uh, mission uh, in a better way has come out of the experience from chandrayaan 2 Yeah, uh, you know, this is, this is a huge uh, uh, boost for Indian uh, space uh, efforts, actually. We are all uh, looking at it very proudly. Uh, you know that every Indian is so proud of it, you know, and anxiously following it up every every half an hour. They are looking at what is happening to Chandrayaan 3. Uh, and I'm sure for the science and technology area, uh, STEM area we generally call it, uh, so that that area is going to get a great flip from this uh, mission. Uh, and in the sense that uh, there are a lot of youngsters, a uh, lot of students uh, uh, who are eagerly looking at uh, such uh, technological fields. And uh, they realize that uh, such things can be done in our country within our resource limitations. And they will be surely, uh, will be really encouraged to do uh, such things either uh, in science or in technology various areas uh, where they can be at the uh, at the top of the thing it, at the apex of the world achievements you know that this will be the uh, last 50 years this will be the second uh, uh, so soft landing that we will be achieving only china has done it the other missions whatever that the us and uh, russia has done uh, as well soviet union has done is almost 50 years back 
and the last 50 years this is the second uh, uh, india is the second country who is uh, uh, who will be achieving this so i think it will be a very proud moment and it will give a great uh, impetus to our uh, uh, scientific temperament from breaking news detailed analysis in depth interviews and explainers follow the times of india subscribe to our youtube channel don't forget to like our videos and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest.